In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to use the new and improved Faceware Live Client for Unity. If you've used the previous version, there are a few changes, but it's largely the same. Just with a few usability improvements and some under the hood updates to improve stability and connectivity, so you should have no trouble with this new version. This tutorial will walk you through adding the Live Client asset into your project, setting up the character setup file so you can use your rig with Live, and adding the Live Client component so you can stream from Live Server. You can see here that I'm using our Victor rig, which comes packaged with the Live Client both as a separate asset and in a demo scene that you can take a look at. The first step in your project is to actually get the Faceware Live Client. So just go to the Unity Asset Store, you can search for Faceware, and the Live Client should come up and you can click on it to install. Once you've imported the package into your project from the Unity Asset Store, we can open up the Live Client Character Setup window from the Tools menu. Click Faceware and Character Setup. In the previous version of the plugin, you would open the character setup window from the window menu, but now it's in the tools menu, so just keep that in mind. Once you click character setup, it'll open up the Faceware Live Client for Unity character setup window, which you can see here. This contains the functionality that will let us generate a character setup file so that Live will work with our particular rig. We're creating a brand new character setup file, so we'll click new and we'll give it a name. Just call it Victor. You'll notice that we're creating a .asset file type instead of the JSON file that Live for Unity used to use. Your old character setup files will not work in this newer version of Live Client for Unity, so keep that in mind. Now we're ready to add the controls from our character into our character setup file. I'm going to select it by selecting the root object in the scene, which in our case is the Victor Faceware Unity demo object, and hit the Get Controls from Selected Object button in the client. Once I've done that, you'll see that it's populated the selected object with all of the available controls. Our rig is primarily a blend shape rig, so you can see all these blend shapes here, as well as rotation and position controls, and our eyes, which are actually joints. So we're going to select all the objects that we want to use, specifically the ones we want to be driven by Faceware Live Server. So in a lot of cases, you can select all, which is what I'm going to do here, and add controls. You can see it's populated the added controls section with anything here. If you want to add more, you can select them from selected objects one at a time and hit add controls. Or if you want to remove them and you don't actually want to use them, you can select them here in the added controls and hit remove controls and that will remove them from the character setup file. Once we're happy with the controls that we've added and we want Live Server to drive, it's time to set up our expressions. So let's take a step back and consider how Live Server actually streams the facial tracking data. The data that comes from Live Server is based on specific facial shapes such as blinks, jaw open, brow raises, etc. And Live Server is streaming a value of 0 to 1 for each shape. What we're doing with the expression state here it's teaching the software how we want the rig to move for each of these shapes, which in turn is what produces the animation. Once we've loaded up or created a new character setup file like we have, this expression set list is populated with each of these shapes. We're going to go through the list and effectively teach the software what each shape looks like on our rig. So the first one, and this one's pretty important, is the neutral pose, where nothing is happening on the face. You can see eyes are open, looking forward, brows are relaxed, mouth is closed and relaxed. This is the baseline and used as a resting expression, if you will, where nothing is happening. So you're going to position the controls on the rig to look like this, and when you're ready, hit save pose. Once you've done that, you'll see that the red mark next to the pose name is now a green check mark. That means we've saved our expression. We're going to move down our list and set up each one. So the next expression in our list is eye direction left. We'll go to our shapes. In this case, uh, the eyes are actually on joints. So we're going to take this and rotate it left. And do the same thing for the right eye, which is right here. Rotate that. And once we're happy with the expression we have, we're going to hit save pose again and move on all the way down the list. So as we move to each subsequent pose, so next we do eye direction right, 
we want to make sure that only the specific controls for that pose are being activated and saved. If, for example, you accidentally left the eyes closed when you set the jaw open expression, then the resulting animation will make the eyes blink whenever the jaw opens on the actor, which is almost certainly something we don't want to see. To avoid this, as we move on, we're going to press the Reset Character to Neutral button before making each pose. So we're about to do eye direction right, set it back to neutral. You can see everything pops back to neutral. Neutral being whatever we set for the neutral expression here. Now we're going to create the new expression, eye direction right, move the eyes right, and hit save. Similarly, just for you know, demonstration purposes, we'll go down to jaw open. Now that is a blend shape, which we can find here. And as we scroll down, we've got jaw open. So first, because the eyes are still looking to the side, we want to reset character to neutral. Select it. Find the jaw open again, which is right here. Set that to its maximum value, which is 100. And save. I'm going to want to go through this list and add every expression that you want for your character. To get the most expressiveness and use the tracking to its fullest potential, it's ideal to be able to make every different expression in this list on your character, but it's not strictly necessary. If your rig doesn't have the ability to make an expression, it's perfectly fine to leave it out of the character setup file. Just keep in mind that it'll be reflected in your final animation. You can, for example, leave out you know, the ooh phoneme, but just know when your actor makes an ooh shape, it's not going to look like it on your rig. Once you're finished with all your expressions, as we are here, you can go up to the top and click save to make sure our character setup asset is saved exactly how we want it. And that's all there is for character setup. In our next tutorial, we're going to connect our character to live server so we can start streaming animation onto the rig. For more information about Faceware Live, visit our YouTube page and our website at facewaretech.com.